What is up you guys? Glitches here and welcome back to the channel. I wanted to quickly drop part two of the water purification system series that I made. If you watched the previous video, part one, I went over the basics on how to build an efficient and effective rain catching water system setup. Um, in this video, I'm going to go over the more advanced tips and some of the tricks that I found out to help make your farms a lot more efficient and how to set those up. So let's jump right into it. Um, if we go down to my little garden here, we obviously have the same setup that we finalized in part one with our rain catchers, seven of them connecting to our water purifier, and then the purifier going to our storage bin so we get all the purified water in there. Now we want to start setting up our farm. So like I mentioned previously, I wouldn't recommend even bothering with a farm until you've at least taken out the third boss, the spider boss, which allows you to unlock in the memetics tab tree the ability to make irrigation systems and grow lights. So if you go under fortifications after the uh, uh, Araxium, it's actually considered tier four, but it's the third boss that you face. If you keep going down, you'll notice that you can now make grow lights and an irrigation system, sprinkler system to help uh, automate your farming. And this is what really makes farming effective. Um, it's not really effective in my opinion until you get these two key items. So I wouldn't even bother with it until then. But once you do get it, it's actually super beneficial. And there's some things I found out just last night actually that I'm sure a lot of you don't know that uh, is a game changer for setting up your farm and saving you a ton of power in your base because we know power is key it is a very limited resource especially if you want to hook up deviants turrets things like that you want to make your setups as efficient as possible so that you're using the least amount of power as possible so that is what i'm going to show you today so moving on once you get the memetics points you're obviously going to un unlock these two if you're planning on setting up a farm here is how you utilize them it's going to basically tie off right to the initial build that we already did you're going to want to create a sprinkler system and create uh, some grow lights. Now here is the first trick. Uh, most people don't have, in my opinion, the efficient farming setup. Um, some people put them in a long line. Some people just make a big uh, oversized box and just fill it all in with plants or they do rows, things like that. Um, the other thing I see a lot of is uh, people putting a uh, single grow lamp over each box which is what i did in the beginning because i didn't even know that this feature that i'm about to tell you existed um but i'll go over and show you basically the most efficient setup from my experience what i recommend is doing a three by three grid you can go a little wider but anything bigger than a three by three is going to need two sprinkler systems and i'll show you why here in a second so to start off we'll start with the sprinkler system the way you get those working is you connect a pipe from your storage bin, uh, hitting V to the um, sprinkler system. So now it's attached. And because we went from the storage bin to the sprinkler, uh, the water flow is in the right direction because the nozzle is actually higher than the connection point of the um, sprinkler. Uh, so you can actually have these two devices on the same level. It, the storage bin doesn't have to be higher, kind of like how the rain catchers had to be higher than the purifier. Because the nozzle of the bucket is actually a little bit higher on the storage bin, you can have the sprinkler on the same uh, level and it will still flow in the right direction. So once you connect the pipe, the next thing you have to do, if you notice here, is you have to connect the sprinkler up to electricity. So you're gonna wanna hit X to create an electrical connection and plug that into any power node that you have that's running power. Now you're gonna see the sprinkler start working. Um, it's kind of hard, but because it, it's nighttime, but it sprays in a 360 degree circle. And that is why to be effective, you want to make a three by three grid with the middle cut out. That way you can pick up your sprinkler system, put it right in the middle. And believe it or not, that 360 degree spinning water spout will water all eight of the surrounding plants at once and only use the power of one sprinkler. So as long as you're doing three by three grids, you can do as many of them wide as you want. You can take out that middle one, put another set of three by uh, three. Um, well, actually it won't need to be a full three by three because the middle one will count for both. Um, but you can do another box set up, put a second sprinkler system in between that little clump of uh, boxes. And that is how you can efficiently water 
all of your plants uh, simultaneously um, at the same time without using multiple sprinklers. So I'll quickly seed one real quick. And uh, we don't even need to use this right now because um, the next thing that a lot of people didn't realize is both the grow lamps and the sprinkler systems actually have variable power. And the reason they do that is because as you can see, every plant or crop that you grow has a plus or minus scale of the quality that it wants to kind of fall in to have an optimum yield for the final result when you harvest it. Um, for wheat, for example, it ideally likes anywhere between 50 to 90% for irrigation and water at all times while it's growing. And for lighting, it likes 70 to 100% light at all times while it's growing. Now before, if you were a lower level and you tried setting up wheat and you didn't have a grow lamp, anytime it was nighttime, these wheat plants wouldn't be getting enough sunlight and your yield would be down to zero and you'd be wasting uh, harvest crops, uh, basically. You wouldn't be getting as many in the final output as if you had a grow light. That's why I'm saying wait until you get these two key um, devices because that is when you can get the most out of your crops. And basically how that works now is you go to, like I mentioned, they have variable settings. If you go to either the grow lamp or the irrigation system and just hover over it, you'll notice uh, if you hit F, it says change the gear and it says by default, the current value is 10, which when you're looking at the crop and you go to info is only 10%, seven to 10% of the water output. So the power level of the grow lamp and the power level of your sprinkler matches the amount of water that it's gonna be putting out for your irrigation. So what you wanna do for wheat, for example, because it likes, um, like I said, between 50 and 90, you could bump this purification system and you just have to tap F, you'll notice that the uh, power intensity goes up. So we can bring all the way up to 90, for example, and that is gonna make more water come out. And now when we check our wheat, the um, water amount is slowly gonna start, see it was at seven, it's at nine, it's slowly gonna start going up until it reaches about 90%, 80 to 90%. And you're gonna get into that green zone where it's gonna be more efficient when it comes to watering and things like that. So that is how the sprinkler system works. You wanna put it in the center of everything. Um, I probably don't have this centered enough, um, but you wanna try and get that as dead center as possible so it hits all eight boxes at the same time. Make sure you up the power of it so that it's pumping out the full value of water. And basically that's just gonna constantly be taking all the reserve water that you have from your storage bin and pumping it directly into this pump that'll just constantly be pushing it out. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is if you know you're not going to be growing crops for an extended period of time, don't leave the water pump plugged in because that's just going to continuously use up all of your stored water until you run out. So just go into edit mode. They fixed this in the recent patch. Highlight the pipe that's connected to it and just remove it. And that will stop once you connect the power. Actually, not the pump, connect the power because it actually stores a little bit once it's in there. So unconnect the power and you could, um, what I recommend is, this is just for demonstrations, but set up um, the other thing you should invest some points into under power generation are these uh, switch pylons or the power box. You throw this down and what you can do is you can hook all of the uh, main power lines that run to your irrigation system. You can run them from the power box to the next node in the chain, say like this one, for example, delete the ones you're no longer using. And what this will do is now, if you turn the switch off, all the things that were past that switch will no longer, well, actually it's, it did it backwards. There we go. So now it turns off all the power and your osmosis tank won't be working now. Your pumps won't be working now. And so if you hook up that switch in the right order, you won't have to sit there and delete uh, electricity wires all the time. You can just use a switch, hit one button and turn your whole irrigation system on and off to basically only use the pumps and the grow lights when you absolutely need them. 
and it will also reserve bonus power for the other things in your base that you do want to use at any given point. So that is a nice little uh, pro tip, is once you get everything set up, try and rearrange your wires to run through a switch to regulate the power only when you need to use it. Now, the other thing, moving on, that these plants need besides water is light. And the only thing besides sunlight that will do that are these grow lamps. And to make a grow lamp, you're just gonna go into the build menu, go to facilities, go to functional, same place that the um, grow boxes, the rain collection systems are in, and that is where you'll find the pump and the grow light. You make one, you hang it from a ceiling, um, and it doesn't require a pump of any sort, but it does take wattage. So you're gonna to want to connect an electrical wire to um, a working power node. And then you will see that the light will start shining down on your plant. And see that irrigation was going up, but now we have 100% light. And the reason why it's 100% is because I've already messed with this one, but the lights also have a variable power output. By default, when you first make one, this is gonna be set to 10. So if it's set to 10 and you check your plant, now that light is only at 10%. So you're not gonna be getting the full light you need. So what you wanna do is as soon as you make it, just get close to it, look at it, tap that activation key until you see that number going up to 100 or 90, whatever one you need for that plant. And that is how you can properly adjust the um, lighting intensity to keep that particular crop in the exact green zone that it needs at any given point. Now, the other thing that I was testing, and here's the pro pro tip that I don't think many people at all know because I just figured this out myself yesterday doing a bunch of testing with some other people in the discord because I was asking about it but I personally my buddy's the one with our grow light memetic so I couldn't build it myself to test it but I got someone else to help me out and do the test for me and we confirmed and this is why I destroyed my ceiling here temporarily I don't even have it set up this way yet because that is uh, something we just figured out what I found out was is just like the physics based systems for water there's also scientific and physics based systems for light. So most people in their base, you'll see, will have just a string of grow lamps going across a one wall height ceiling, basically lighting up one planter box for each light. Well, that is a huge inefficient waste of power that you could be saving in your base because what we figured out was much like the water, the lower you put a light, if you look, the sharper and more intense that beam becomes. If you go, just like in real life, put a light at a higher elevation, and this is the kicker, and you suspend it from a higher elevation, that light actually gets dispersed in a larger radius. So now, where it was only covering the amount of one box, if you uh, rearrange your grow area so that you have a like half wall or something like that, just a little bit higher than a normal ceiling height. What you can do then is you can take those crops and I'll just quickly move these as an example, space them apart. I'll throw a quick uh, another plant in here, some fertilizer, seed it. And as you can see now, because we placed the light higher and the area of effect is larger, you can get 100% sunlight effectiveness on more than one planter box. And this is huge. And what we did was we basically made a test warehouse with really, really high ceilings. And sure enough, when it was all closed in, we put that light super, super high. That thing spread out across the entire floor. And sure enough, it surprisingly worked. And we were able to light like almost 12 planter boxes with one light just by putting the light higher up in the air. So if you, we, ours is going to be a little tricky. I'm going to have to try and refine our setup a little bit again to kind of take advantage of this because I obviously want to preserve some extra power but that is probably the biggest pro tip is you can save say you were building a grow lamp for each one that's one two three four five six seven eight times I think it's two watts each of these use you're using 16 watts almost one full bio generators worth of power just to power your three by three grid of plants but with the trick that we just found out you can do the same thing you would do for the water sprinkler. You'd put it in the middle, use it efficiently, water eight at a time, and in this instance, put your light higher, and now you can light eight plants at a time with only one light. So that is the big trick, and uh, that is the 
pro tip of the day to efficiently set up your farm so that you can basically do an entire 8x8 or more grid of crops with perfect irrigation and perfect light only using one grow light and one sprinkler. So yeah, that is part two. That is how you set up proper farms. In my opinion, that is the most efficient and effective way. Uh, three by three grids are your best friend. In uh, summary here real quick, put them in a box, put your sprinkler system in the middle, pipe goes from your storage bin to the sprinkler, electric uh, connection goes from your sprinkler to a power node, that will sprinkle in a 360 degree, watering all your plants. Make sure, again, that you go and change the power intensity of both the light and the sprinkler to match which crop you're growing. Some of them like uh, more drier climates and it'll be like a 50 to 60 range that you want. So you'll want to turn down your sprinkler um, to uh, be more efficient with the water usage. You don't want to overwater it because that will have a bad yield as well. So it's kind of like a balancing act. And then for the light, that was a game changer when we figured that out. So the higher you put your light, the wider that light disperses and you can heat like 12 plus plants with one light. So four watts total between one sprinkler and one light can basically do an entire farm for you. So yeah, that is part two of my farming and water efficiency setup guide. If you guys found this video informative, if you found it helpful and enjoyed it, be sure to smash that like button as always and comment down below. I appreciate all of you guys' feedback. Uh, but until the next one, hope you guys had a great day and we'll see you all later.